Hey guys, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna give a conceptual overview on using decision trees for economic evaluation and health technology assessment. Let's go. So what is a decision tree? A decision tree is a tool used for evaluating alternatives when a single action must be made at the cost of others. It is a tool which has its use predominantly in cost effectiveness analysis and health technology assessment, which is a subfield within health economics and health services research. A technical definition of a decision tree would be that it is a single player game against nature where the states of nature is, are observable. Decision trees are useful as a way of drawing clinical pathways and evaluating alternatives of different treatments that we want to go and assign to a patient. They are mostly used for going and deciding whether we should invest in a new drug, health technology, or a program which is patient-centered. The place where you can see a lot of this work being done is in a lot of pharmacoeconomics journals, specifically the Journal of Medical Economics is the one that comes to mind, though there are other journals that are out there. So before we go into actually modeling, we want to go and talk about um, some style guides for drawing decision trees. So there's going to be really three different types of nodes that we're going to be going and having. We're going to be having a choice node, which is going to be denoted by a square, a chance node, which is going to be denoted by a circle, and a terminal node, which is going to be denoted by a triangle. And a choice node, well, that's a point where you're supposed to be making a choice uh, at some point. And from that choice node, you move on to transition nodes or chance nodes, um, where you have a chance of going and moving into another chance node right, which is not the example here, or going down to our terminal node here. Now, in general, um, decision nodes should not come after chance nodes in the tree because you should be going and analyzing decisions at only one point. However, as a style, I'll be putting in a square, which will denote a choice node, but it'll just go and indicate that there is a specific node payoff of going and taking an action. So there's either a node uh, payoff or a node cost that you're going and picking up at the end there. In terms of there being a theory of decision trees, there's not really a whole lot to know. There's not really any theorems to be cognizant of which are novel. Um, there's two rules that I think we should talk about though. The first rule is that decision nodes should not come after chance nodes if an initial decision has already been made. Um, this is known as the best response principle. You can think about this logically if you go and you have a decision node that comes after a chance node when there has already been a decision. Um, our agent will just go and best respond there and you will just end up trimming uh, the tree a little bit more. Um, so we want to be able to go and just have a decision node followed by chance nodes. That's really what we want there. The second rule for Beck best practice is that if a chance node occurs before the time when an initial decision must be made and, and the state of the world being observable, the decision sh is not made until the certainty is resolved. This comes from David Krebs's uh, course in microeconomic theory, and it's called the fundamental rule of decision trees here. So that just means that no decision is made on your decision tree until the state of nature is known. In terms of a solution concept for our decision trees, we need to remember our purposes for using a decision tree is to perform a cost effectiveness analysis. And we need to be able to calculate a incremental cost effectiveness ratio. And we also have to define our threshold here. If our threshold is greater than or equal to our ICER, our technology is said to be cost effective. However, if our threshold is less than our incremental cost effective ratio or ICER, then it is said to not be cost effective and we would not invest in that technology. This will be part of the picture in our examples that will follow in this video. So now that we know um, a lot of the theory of decision trees, we're now going to go and show two examples of how we're going to go and actually compute them. I'll see you guys in that video. Take care.